from the PLCE University, a quick presentation in the Factory Rat series, What is a PLC? This episode is What is Ladder Logic? This is a small piece of a electrical print from an industrial control system. If you don't know electricity now, you might want to stop, go watch a couple videos on basic electricity, and then come back. Go to PLC University Virtual Classrooms. The very first classroom is basic electricity and magnetism. This is a small piece of an electrical print. At the top, you see that we're connected to two terminals of a three-phase system. We have a step-down control transformer that gives us 120 volts. AC. The reason that we call this ladder logic is because the individual circuits, and there are four of them that are suspended, if you want, between 101 and 102. When you look at them from the 20 foot view, it looks like rungs on a ladder. Let's start with a real simple circuit an electric motor, and I'm taking a little license here. Typically a 480 volt AC motor would be a three phase motor. I have a switch that I can turn that motor on and off with. At 480 volts with any kind of a power motor, it's going to draw a lot of current and every time you open and close that switch, you're gonna see a lot of arcing and it's going to burn the contacts. However, let's say one day you have conditions that you want to complete in place before you run the motor, like three limit switches in your process and you want all three limit switches which is tripped, otherwise the motor doesn't run. Now you've got four contacts that have to be super heavy duty and handle high amp. We have a good solution for that, and that is not to have any more high voltage, high current contacts than necessary. Replace all of that with one contact, and that one contact is a heavy duty contact from a contactor, coil of which we're labeling CR, contact relay, and we've moved those four conditions down into a low voltage, 24 volt DC circuit, and now these four sets of contacts can be very small and lightweight. 150 milliamps is considerably less than 7 amps. The logic here is if all three limit switches are tripped and you have the switch on, then you energize CR that closes the big heavy duty contact and turns on the motor. Where do we find these circuits? Find them in a relay panel. And what's in a relay panel? Hundreds of relays. Each one of those brown rectangles represents a relay. On one end of the panel, there's a terminal strip that you mount your input devices to, your field devices, and on the other end of the relay panel, the output field devices. If we take a closer look at these I took the liberty to change the color from brown to yellow. The input field devices can be all different voltages, anywhere from 5 volts to 480 volts. The coils of those yellow relays have to match the field device voltage, the field wiring interface to the relay panel. And then consequently on the other end, those yellow relays, they're all going to have the same coil voltages as the brown relays, but the contacts on the right end for the output devices those contacts have to be able to handle the voltage and the current for the output devices. So let's connect up our input devices. We had a switch and we had three limit switches. And then we these three items together energized something we called CR. A contact from CR through an output circuit turned on the motor. These relays all have a pair of contacts, normally open, normally closed. Let's take another example. Here's our field wiring. We have a pressure switch. That pressure switch operates on 115 volts AC in the field. It energizes a contact relay, CR1. On the output side of our, we have field wiring. We have 240 volts AC. Somewhere there's a relay, CR12, that will control this contact. And when this contact closes, it will energize that coil and will close three contacts that supply three phase power to the motor. And here's the logic for that relay CR12. We have six relays. We don't see the coils here. We're just grabbing one little chunk of relay logic, one field device, which is CR1, the pressure switch hydraulic reservoir. And that pressure switch closes when the hydraulic pressure is up to the set point. The other end of the field wiring, when we close the contact CR12, that runs the motor to pump the pressure up. Now that is a rung of ladder logic. 
These are also rungs of ladder logic, even though all three of these are different voltage. Each voltage in a relay diagram has its own set of rungs. Back to our panel logic. In the relay panel, you have the brown relays. They are wired up for the logic. Here's what this rung of logic says. This contact reads the state of the coil, CR6, and if CR6 is energized, then this contact is electrically true continuity. The continuity is electrically true. This contact, which is a normally closed, this contact reads the state of CR1, and if CR1 is de-energized, then this contact is electrically true continuity, if the coil is de-energized. Truth on for the first one, truth off for the second one. Third one's another truth on. This contact reads the state of CR8, and if CR8 is energized, then you have electrically true continuity. Consequently, same thing for CR3. If it's de-energized, then you have true continuity. These two, if CR4 and CR12 are energized, Energized, then you have electrical true continuity. Now notice that CR12-1 is a contact that's controlled by CR12. So if CR12 is energized, that closes this contact and bypasses CR4-3. Any logically true path through this set of contacts here will energize CR12. How many possible true paths of electrical true continuity do we have here? Here's the first one. If CR6 is energized and CR1 is de-energized and CR8 is energized, then energize CR12. Or if CR3-1 is closed, meaning if CR3 is de-energized, off, and CR, CR4 is on, energized, then energize CR12. Or if CR3 not energized, if CR3 is de-energized and CR12 is energized, then keep CR12 energized. And that is ladder logic in a nutshell.